drink beer, it's good for you. Hello and welcome to the video. Within this video guide I have a very tried and tested recipe for brewing a very easy drinking and flavourful mango fruit based beer that is suitable as a regular beer or as a sour beer. The only difference is the choice of yeast and either way this results in a great tasting beer with real mango fruit flavour. So let's get started. Within this video guide I will take you through all of the steps in order, starting with a look at my recipe's vital statistics. As you can see this recipe offers an approximation of 4.5% ABV, irrespective of if you go sour or regular owl root. This is not a very bitter beer either, making this very easy drinking too. This recipe, like all of my shared recipes, is written by me and can be found in full within the video's description, which is found underneath the video window when viewed on a desktop computer. Like all of my shared recipes, this recipe is very tried and tested, so brew it with confidence. You will also find a full link to the recipe in Brewfather, which can be used free of charge with some restrictions. I strongly suggest that you fully convert the recipe before ordering in your ingredients so that you are actually brewing the recipe as intended. You should also brew this recipe as is the first time, and then the next time tweak it if you really feel that you need to, rather than the other way around for the very best of results. This is basically because I spend an awful lot of time getting my recipes in the best state that I can, so that you should not really need to tweak them. I have an easy guide to recipe conversion using Brewfather on my channel as shown on screen now. Within this video this recipe has been, been brewed using a Brewzilla 65 litre Gen 4 system to the volume of 19 litres, or approximately 5 US gallons. But as part of the conversion process this can be scaled and shaped to suit your own brewing system and volume requirements. Recipe conversion is an essential part of the initial process for any shared recipe, but thankfully the conversion is easy when you know how. I also highly suggest that you plan your water profile ahead, after all beer is mostly water and its balance is important so that it suits the beer that you are brewing. Shown on screen is the water profile that I preferred in developing this recipe, which is found on Brewfather. This balance profile works really well. Brewfather also has very good documentation on how to use the software to make the necessary water changes too. For this reason I strongly suggest that all brewers, irrespective of experience level, start treating their water as soon as possible for the very best of end results. Let's now start the brew. This begins by preheating and maintaining our mash water to the first mash step, which is now shown on screen. We then gradually add in our crushed grain, stirring as we go to ensure that each grain is wet and that there are no clumps. Failing to do this properly will impact the whole brew, so it is very much vital to take your time in this initial process. It was then time to start the actual mash for 60 minutes. The brew that I'm using has no need for the top mash plate for this brew, so I left that off and have the system's pump providing recirculation. Let's now go through the fermentables and grain bill. Firstly we have Pilsner malt at 39%. I have used extra power Pilsner in my recipe, but feel free to use a darker variant like regular Pilsner malt. It matters not for the difference in colour. This malt provides the bulk of the fermentables and a nice clean and crisp canvas for our intended flavours to make their impression onto. At 23% we have the actual mango fruit. This is actually added during the fermentation to ensure that we enjoy its full flavour effect. I will give details on what's involved here and all, all of the information you need at the appropriate part of the video. Then at 22% we have wheat malt. This malt will add its own fermentable sugars as well as a nice complementing flavour for our mango along with some extra body and texture. Then we have acid malt, which I have left in this recipe as it plays a vital role in ensuring a suitable mash pH. I suggest aiming for a pH of between 5.1 and 5.3 for the mash. Naturally you can change your pH with straight chemicals if you wish, in which case you should replace this malt with Pilsner malt. Following this we have 5% of carapils or carafoam, which will add in body and head retention. Then finally we have 5% of oats which due to their starches and gums will act to thicken the beer giving a fuller mouthfeel and body. At the end of the first mash we then preheat to the mash out temperature and then maintain this for just 10 minutes. This is used to help loosen the grain bed to make it for an easier sparge and also to stop enzymic activity. Next I performed a nice even manual sparge across the entire grain bed. This washes out remaining sugars and tops up our volume allowing for boil off during the boil phase. 
Before you start your sparge it is important to lift the grain up out of the kettle and once you have this in place I suggest setting your system to either boiling temperature or close to get the heating started quickly for time efficiency. It was then not long before this brew was at the boil. The first step always is to stir in the foam you see on top which is simply protein. Failing to do this can result in a dreaded boil over which never fails to make quite a mess as well as being potentially dangerous. This kind of thing also tends to put our partners off of us brewing so all in all it's something to be careful with for sure. Let's now have a look at and run through our boil schedule. Firstly, in keeping with the modern boil time, this one is boiled for just 30 minutes rather than 90 minute boils that we used to perform when dealing with Pilsner malt in times gone by. This is simply not needed these days with mainstream malt for brewing due to enhancements to the modifications made during the malting process. Here you can also see that there are only two small hop additions in this one, both being Centennial, which will add in some very pleasant flavours and aromas that fit very nicely with this brew, which is citrus, piney and a little floral. When adding your hops, do make sure to give them a good stir in as you just saw me do. This will not only ensure that you're quickly adding in the desired IBU, but also that the vegetable matter will drop down to the bottom. After all, during the wort cooling process, it is then time to transfer our wort into our fermenter and pitch our yeast. So at this point, with this recipe, you have a choice. If you want this to be a sour beer, then I would suggest pitching fully sour yeast. However, if you are simply looking for a mango ale, then a neutral yeast like Fermentis US05 would be one direction to go. This will allow the mango fruit and the citrus and piney flavours from our centennial hops to rule the show. As an added option, what can be rather nice though is to use a yeast with nice ester flavours like Verdant for example, which will add in extra flavours of tropical nature as well as apricot. Or you could simply brew a batch and split it between different yeast and different fermenters for some extra variety. If you have never done this before then you'll be surprised how different each one can be. Whichever way you decide to go, be sure to check out the manufacturer's recommended temperature range for fermentation. As a further note, if your intention is to use a flavourful yeast and would like to use pressure, then be sure not to use any pressure at all until day 3 of fermentation, as this is the period when your yeast makes its flavour and aroma impressions. Your next step will be around adding your fruit. For the very best results, wait until you see that your original fermentation has dropped down so that you are 5 to 10 points away from your final gravity. At this point, you can then add in your fruit. By using this late fermentation method you are ensuring the best and cleanest fruit flavour within the end beer. As you see me doing here I would suggest an easy approach by using a quality mango fruit puree. The results this way will be very good and there is no preparation. You can consider fermentation to be complete when you have a consistent final gravity for three days. Starting with the pour let's now look at the end beer from this brew alongside my tasting notes. Here you can see that the pour is on the golden side and that once in the glass the end beer is a nice amber colour with a pure white head. As I am sure all of my regular viewers know by now I especially appreciate a nice frothy head on my beers and my setup is made with this in mind. No attempts have been made to clear this beer at all and I rather like it in its natural form personally. This beer has been under 12 psi of pressure which is 0.83 bars and I am using this pressure for serving too. This example that you see here is at around the three week point from kegging which is really the point where I believe this one is ready to drink and enjoy, however it will continue to clean up a little until the five to six week point you may find. I would also highly recommend a drinking temperature of between seven to ten degrees celsius which is the equivalent of between approximately 45 to 50 degrees fahrenheit. Temperatures lower than this will simply hide flavour. And then finally I will also mention that in my example I used a neutral owl yeast so do bear this in mind with my tasting notes. Here are my tasting notes at this three week point as follows. Aroma. This one has a very nice fresh aroma which involves mango and a little citrus. Flavour. On entry this one gives a nice fresh mango taste that is balanced with some light malt in the middle with a small citrus kick at the end. This beer has enough bitterness to stop it being sweet but it is certainly not very dry. And here are some notes. My main experimentation with this recipe was around its bitterness level. The fruit side was a little on the sickly side when too sweet. With an estimated FG at 1.008, this tastes really good. But if yours finishes a point or two above this, then I would not be too concerned for most people's taste. And my final impression is that this is a real mango owl that will suit those looking for something easy drinking, but without a high ABV, but with plenty of fresh mango fruit flavour. 
Now naturally these tasting notes would have been different if this was fermented with Philly Sour or a flavorful yeast, which would both add in additional flavors. I would love to hear from you once you have brewed this and what variety you chose and have given it a tasting yourself within the comments section of this video. I do hope that you found this video useful, informative and interesting. If so, why not consider liking and subscribing? For further support you can join the channel's Facebook group, and if you would like to support the channel then check out the channel's merchandise store, as all profits go back into the channel. Until next time, happy brewing!